We are going on an adventure. Hi friends, we are at, oh, some amazing ruins. I love ruins so much. We are at one of my favorite ruins in all of England. We are at St. Mary's Church Ruins in East Somerton, Norfolk. Norfolk is incredible. It has the highest concentration of medieval churches in the entire world. There are over 650 medieval churches just in Norfolk County. I actually found this place completely by accident. I found a picture of it on Instagram and when I saw it, I was like, I have to go there. So I actually went here about a year ago um, in, the, in the spring where it was very leafy and would come back in the winter because I thought that it would be more atmospheric and boy was I right. There's a fantastic quote by the beloved English poet, John Betjeman that says, Norfolk would not be Norfolk without a church tower on the horizon or round a corner up a lane. And boy, is that true. St. Mary's Church Ruins is right on the coast, just a mile from the beach. And even in that mile, you pass another church, which you can see here. Depending on which source you're looking at, Norfolk had anywhere from 800 to over 1,000 churches built during the medieval period. The name Somerton comes from the Old English summer enclosure, which it is absolutely not right now. You can probably see my breath a little bit. It's cold. The parish of Somerton was well established and had a long history even by the Norman conquest in 1066. It was mentioned extensively in the Doomsday Book, the resources, the parish lands, and, and the parish landowners. If you want to know a little bit more about the Doomsday Book, I mention it in the Castle Rising episode, which I will link below in the description box. When you walk up to St. Mary's Church, it almost feels like you're stepping into another world. The trees almost completely cover it, and nature definitely has taken over this once magnificent structure. Only two parts of this awe-inspiring building still remain, the nave and the large bell tower. The tower just behind me was the first part of the church that was built. It was built in approximately the 13th century. The nave in front of me here, which is where the parishioners would have sat, was built in the 15th century. And the last recorded date of this church being in use was the 17th century. So this church has been in ruins for over 300 years. This is the nave. Originally, people would have stood during church services. Wooden benches or pews would not have been added until the 14th, or even more likely, until the 15th century. The parishioners would have been responsible for taking care of all things having to do with the nave. 
and many of their most important life events would have been celebrated here. These gorgeous, now empty and barren window frames would have held stained glass windows. Whenever I go to a church or abbey ruin, the one thing I always most wish I could have seen was the stained glass windows. As I mentioned earlier, the bell tower is the oldest part of St. Mary's Church, possibly dating from the 13th century. Bell ringing was incredibly important during the Middle Ages. Bells would have rung for Sunday functions, festivals, celebrations, funerals, and marking the hours of the day. The chancel of St. Mary's Church, which is where the altar would have been, has long since crumbled away and can no longer be seen. Churches during this time almost always would have had the main altar facing east towards Jerusalem. This is a view of the church from above. Photos and videos don't give you a sense of how huge this church actually is. Here's a photo I took with a person inside the church to give you a better idea of the scale of this amazing place. The church is made from local flint, which in some places is napped, like you see here. Napping is when the flint is chipped so that the black glossy interior is visible. The nave is made from whole flint, and you can also see ashlar dressings around the doorways and windows. Ashlar masonry is when the stone is cut square, like you can see here. Okay. It's legend time, and there is an amazing legend associated with St. Mary's Church. This tree I'm standing by is known as the Wish's Finger, and it kind of looks like a long, pointy finger. But the legend goes that there was an old witch with a peg leg that was accused of witchcraft and brought to St. Mary's Church to be executed. The legend says that she was buried alive underneath the church and from her wooden leg grew the giant oak tree. And as it grew bigger and bigger, it's what built, made the church come into ruins. <laughs> it's a pretty fun story. There's also another theory that a squirrel, less ominous, that a squirrel brought an acorn in, planted the acorn and that's how this giant oak tree grew. There's quite a lot of paranormal activity here. It's said at nighttime that angry monks have been seen roaming around the church and that people have felt pokes in the back. It's also said that if you walk around this tree three times that you will unleash the spirit of the witch. I'm not gonna walk around it three times but I sure do love this ruin. This church amazingly survived the Reformation. Over time, the parish grew and was taken over by larger parishes nearby. 
In its last days in the 17th century, it became a chapel for the residents of nearby Burnley Hall until it fell into disuse and ruins. It is possible that this church stood through the reign of 17 monarchs all the way through to Elizabeth I, and it stands as a reminder of days long past. Hope you've enjoyed coming to St. Mary's Church with me in East Somerton in Norfolk. I love this place. It's one of my favorite places to photograph. If you love this, give us a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe. And I'm Evelyn Edwards. This is Queen of the Castles.